Today's show is brought to you by adamandeve.com. If you go to adamandeve.com right now, you'll get 50% off just about any item. A free sex swing. <laughs> uh, Why you are you looking at me you like that, You heard buddy? that right. Oh, because Tom. You think that's a load-bearing sex swing, buddy? <laughs> Huh? Okay, it's not for Tom. <laughs> free sex swing and free shipping if you go there and use the code GLORY at checkout. Hey, this is Dustin Clay. I just uh, I just watched you guys' live show. I just want to let you know that, uh, Tom, you look uh, a lot less like a Viking than I thought you uh, would. Instead, you look more like me on steroids, which is really disappointing. And uh, Cecil, you look like... Uh, well, you look a lot like uh, a lot less like Fry uh, from Futurama than I expected. But anyway, love the show. Enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, this is Desert Dave down in San Antonio once again. I hadn't found anything to bitch about lately. Well, I did, but I was too lazy to bother. But the one thing I always want to do uh, when I hear the show is I'm like, what the fuck? Recording live. How else are you going to fucking record? Recording dead? Recording comatose? No, it's always live. Just say live from fucking Glory Hole Studios. No, I don't really want you to change it. I like it, but I just had a bitch about it because it's like an OCD thing that happens every time I listen to the show. Anyway, Glory Hole motherfuckers from beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Be advised that this show is not for children, the faint of heart, or the easily offended. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome at. This is episode 347. This is actually the address to the joint sessions of Congress of Cognitive Dissonance. I'm going to clap the entire can I, time. Can I put some applause on? We're just going to clap the entire time. I wish you would have told me. I would, have, I would have queued up the applause. Well, you know, I, I, don't like to, I don't like to queue up the intro for mm. you. You know, I like to keep the, I like to keep the mm. laughs and excitement genuine. <laughs> yeah. Buckle your seatbelt, folks. <laughs> Here it is. This is the intro that Tom that was, came up with. It's pretty much all I got. <laughs> It's just, you know, I mean, let's just make fun of me right here. I mean, I'm fucking right here, man. Uh, that was fucking painful. I had to shut it off. I couldn't watch it. The, uh, you didn't like the laugh track? The Republican? I just can't. The Democrats had they a laugh do, track. They do the same thing. Yeah. They do the same thing in both of them. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like every 10 seconds, they, they can't even say a fucking full sentence before everybody's standing on their feet. And it's not just like a little bit of applause. There. Everybody stands no, up. Standing ovations every line. It's every line is a standing ovation. They can't be that good. You would think it would be difficult to stand up and sit down and keep the dick in your mouth the entire time. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot. It's a lot also, to coordinate. A lot of these people are like fucking octogenarian. So they're not going to be fucking able to stand up yeah. and sit down. Can you imagine these people doing body weight squats? Right? Jesus. Like they do a body weight squat and they fucking fill their colostomy bag. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> it's like a fucking Catholic mass. It's, you know, like <laughs> no stand shit. up, sit down, exactly. fucking kneel, fight, Go for fight, a fight, jog around the fucking block, Jesus come Christ. back, like, eat a food. It may as well get your be. protein. It may as well be a mass. So right? I have to feed you during it. <laughs> you get to keep your calories up so you don't go low blood right? sugar mode. <sighs> <Yeah>. <sighs> uh, ridiculous. It's just, it's one of those things that what I want is somebody to go through and just cut out all the fucking applause so right. I can actually listen to what he had to say. So instead I had to read it the next day. Right. So, I just yeah, read about yeah, it. Exactly. I just read about it for the same fucking reason. It's yeah. the same. I can't watch anything with a laugh track. I did hear that there was a laugh track when like he said, he was draining the swamp and the Democrats audibly laughed at him oh. when he said he was draining the swamp. They also gasped when he said, I saw a clip of this the next day. They audibly gasped when he said, 
I'm going to be making a new like Cholo fucking deportation thing. When it's like, <laughs> I'm going to fucking thing. deport all the Cholos or whatever. Somebody should Cholify Trump. Somebody should Cholify. Somebody should Cholify Sessions. Oh, I think that would be amazing. That would be Cholified Sessions. I want to see like a Cholified uh, uh, Betsy DeVos. Cecil, did you did you hear um, where his his quote was like nobody knew healthcare could be this complicated? <laughs> it's so great, uh, so funny, it's so complicated. Two, two major things that happened. He said that right. He's like so complicated, and, the Bernie, and then and then the Bernie thing when he's like, could you imagine if there was a a rally where all my supporters came. It would be the biggest of them all. And Bernie put, they did. It wasn't. And it was a picture of the two, the two side by side inaugurations. <laughs> they did. It wasn't. It was so funny. God. Bernie fucking burned, laid the burn on him. But I, I want, I, there was a bunch of people that were talking about. Yeah. Everybody said, I mean, there's a whole clip of Obama saying healthcare is really complicated. It's like him saying it 25 Five times. times. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody knew it could be so complicated. Anybody who's ever thought about healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. As a system that the government should be involved in any way. If you don't inherently understand how incredibly complex that is, you're not incredibly complex. Yeah. You are a simpleton, right? It's funny because everything he has to deal with is going to be this way. And that's and that was and what I was thinking yeah, too. Yeah. It's not just healthcare. Everything right. on a on a country scale yep. Yep. is not fucking it's not like you know, you could study for it the night before. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not like you could sleep in a holiday and express the night before. <laughs> I had a V8. Yeah, It'll be I, fun. Ah, I fucking, I'm a brain surgeon now. Right. You, you need to make sure that you study this stuff extensively, get the smartest, bestest, hugeliest, the, bigliest people right. on it. The most IQ. Yeah. The most IQ idness. Cause Trump's got a huge IQ. He'll tell you about it on Twitter. <laughs> so the thing is, is get I'll the, show you a picture. Get the Snapchat. smartest people you can find. And talk about right. it, but to say that it's not complex, of course it's complex. Don't be a ridiculous moron. It, 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 it that is a that is a statement that is so insanely obtuse that he should have been embarrassed to have said it. Right, right. And I and I thought, and then the other, I will talk one more one more stupid fucking thing he did that's not related to his story, but um, the fact that he's not embarrassed to have said it shocks me. Yeah. It actually shocks me. Sure, right because. He, at some point, he'd be like, well, I didn't know this was going to be a hard job. Exactly. exactly. Did you think? You, yep. And then I, but I think that's really true. I think he's looking around and he's encountering issues and he's like, well, we'll just do this. And then the reality is like, well, we have to take into account all these other factors, right? right. And these And all these different angles of approach that this problem needs to be considered at. And I think this blows his fucking mind because that's not what you have to do when you negotiate from a position of ultimate authority, which is how he negotiates in his business practice. Right, right. Right. So when you negotiate from that position of, of ultimate authority in business, you don't have to consider all the angles. Right. You just have to consider the major angle. Right. You're, you're, you just have to get your lever in the door. You know, it's funny because people talk about what would happen if we had a president. That was a businessman. What would happen? What would happen? They always talked about this long before yeah. Trump was president. Disastrous. They talked about it. And one of the things that they don't understand is a business of dictatorships. Right. They're not fucking democracies. They're not republics. Right. I mean, some of them clearly are like some of them are a lot better than others. Yeah, right. If you're one but, of those fucking hippy dippy yeah. fucking tech companies sure. that go or out of business, like, you know, yeah, like one of those <laughs> one of those few companies out there that is sort of like, you're like, oh, you're on the Google campus and it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, where you yeah. play ping pong exactly. all day, right? One of those, but but there's also a, a feeling like when you are the guy in charge and it all, the buck stops there, you're going to try to maximize profits. You know, look at most businesses, mm -hmm. most businesses that are out there. Do you think that they, like, I mean, I'm sure there are some out there that care about their workers, but there's other that are like, I don't give a fuck who the fuck these people are, sure. what they do. I'm going to give them the minimal amount of health coverage I can. I'm going to try to make sure that I don't cover it because it's cheaper for me. I'm going to try to expand my profit margin as best I can by doing things that are not good for the entire corporation. It's I'm going to do that work. Fucking look at Walmart for Christ's sure. sakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like. That's a company that doesn't care about its employees. So when you when you when you talk about this, you know this. What, what would it be like if a if a if a businessman was president? Well, maybe he wouldn't care about the average citizen. You ever consider sure, right. that? Yeah. Which business? Right. How well and how how responsibly run is that business? Yeah. You know, like it. it and it's and the difference too is that a business model is a quarterly model, 
right? If, if you're if you're answering to shareholders, you're you're on a you're on a shareholder call. You're trying to maximize, like you said, trying to maximize profits. You're trying to grow the uh, you know investor base that's buying your stock. That's sure, the goal of the sure, company. Yeah. The widgets are a, a, you know secondary, whatever the fucking widget is, doesn't matter. You can't build a country that way, right? Because if if I have a great if I have a job and I just make a ton of money and I burn the house down behind me, but I made a ton of money and the business fails, you shrug. Yeah. You got rich. Some other people got burned and you move the fuck on to another company, but you got rich in the process. So who cares? You can't do that with a nation of 30, 370 million people. Yeah. Oh, and the, the other crazy thing is that from that same speech, um, there, there was a, a portion of that speech where uh, Trump was praising that dead seal, that dead Navy seal. And he was, he, he got like a whole bunch of applause. Like he gets, he gets down on his fucking knees and he fucking worships at the cock of the dead soldier, right? Because sure, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, oh, wait exactly. a wait a, yeah. So he fucking takes it deep and hard. And then he says something like, and everybody applauds. And Trump gets this fucking thing. And he's like, see, see, he's like got the, you know, the the, the number one rating or whatever, like up in heaven. He basically uh, equates how happy this guy should be to be dead because all these fucking people are filleting him in, in memoriam. He, everything is scorekeeping. That's and that's the, that's the takeaway I took from that too. Is everything for this guy is scorekeeping? Yeah. No, oh, hey, look, you got all these fucking you know clapping points. <laughs> yeah, we got a fucking bullet to the face. Yeah, like I so, don't need your clapping. How points. many clapping points do you put on the scale to bring the guy back to life? Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like how yeah. many? How many? How many clapping points fill a coffin? Yeah. Right. Hey, man, seven billion people love your dad. Yeah. Well, he's dead. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's do, seven, do that's, I still yeah. not do I miss him less? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm one of those people that loved him, yeah. right? Like eh, super still sad about yeah. that. <laughs> like, hey, we but we clapped for your dead dad. I'd be like, well, fucking maybe he shouldn't be dead. Well, maybe you can clap him on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we keep trying. Kind <laughs> of get up. <laughs> get that seal up. <laughs> Come on now. Wake up. Oh, God. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Is this thing broken? It's as seen on TV. Come on. Fuck. <laughs> says, maybe plug it in somewhere different. He's got an extra hole God. in him. Oh, no. <laughs> Stick a fucking clapper in his bullet wound. <laughs> you see, there are demons in the earth. Read Matthew, Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. There are demons all over where, and Jesus cast out demons when he walked the earth. All right, so this story is from Right Wing Watch. Rick Wiles. Flynn forced out by devil worshiping Luciferian demon possessed maniacs. That's what by- we're calling the Russians now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean now? <laughs> I've always really uh, behind global child molestation ring. Jeez, there are more fucking that's adjectives. A, that's a mouthful, especially when you're talking about a global molestation ring. <laughs> that's a mouthful. Yeah, generally, if it's a child yeah. molestation ring, it's not much of a mouthful. Yeah, you double up. <laughs> oh God! Oh. Fuck! Really? Really? It's too early to turn the car around. We can't turn the car around this early. I mean, I thought it was bad when I'm making a fucking small dick joke about suck up. And then you're fucking doubling it up. I had the trump card. (laughs) Yeah, it is orange. I can see it over there. All right, so here's Rick Wiles. Uh, we're going to play a lot of this because it's really funny. Just the, he, he just goes off for a long time. It's very funny. He's talking about Flynn getting forced out. And what he's referring to when he's referring to, to Clinton, to Hillary Clinton, he's referring to a tweet. And the tweet that she sent out was after uh, Flynn got let go. They, uh, one of her aides, her former aides, tweeted out something like, Sorry to see you go. Well, karma's a bitch or something like that. Yeah, okay, Basically, yeah, like karma's right, a bitch. Yeah. Um, what goes around comets around. It's the Comet Pizzagate thing. Okay. It's yeah. a punk. It's kind of funny. He does not. He misses the joke. <laughs> <laughs> he misses the joke in an extreme way. So here we go. Here's Rick Wiles. Hillary Clinton's telling us up front what this is all about, guys. She's telling us. Yes, I'm reading she's tweet right she's now. She's bragging. It's about Pizzagate. She's telling them, we took you down. You dared to talk about our filthy child molestation ring. <laughs> you, is his, was his voice breaking in a false sense of, a of, of sad, weepy outrage? Are there any 
clean child molestation rings. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, do you have to add filthy onto that? You know, may, maybe there are if you hose them down yeah, first. That's true. You know, because yeah. you don't. I mean, if they if it's a second use kid, that's true. You know, you don't yeah. want them to be all. Maybe if they're in those Devo suits. <laughs> Whip it. Whip it, guys. <laughs> Those fucking pot hats. Like, they're just like a fucking potted plant on their fucking head. Little jumpers. Yeah. They look so cute as little oh. Devos. Look at that. And now we took you down. That's what she's saying today. This is about people such as General Flynn and others who are aware that there is a criminal cabal running this nation. Wait, there's a criminal cabal running this nation? Didn't we just get a new leader? What do they just be like, okay, so here's the criminal cabal. Right. Is that here's a Here's what we're going to do. Here's what, here's what you need to do, President Trump, is you need to continue to run this criminal cabal. <laughs> if the criminal cabal doesn't change when the administration changes, right? So if they're, they're, then why do we even, then why do they care? Like, why, then, then fine. Who yeah, cares who exactly. the figurehead is, yeah. right? Like, it, it literally means nothing. It's like, well, we're real excited. We got our other figurehead in place, but there's still the cabal of child fuckers over here sure. that are running. And why would the child fuckers be running the joint? Like, wouldn't they just be busy fucking kids all day? Wouldn't they be like, I'm who's really got kinda, time for I this? I kind of want to hide this in, underneath the, the rug. I don't want to fuck kids and run for government. It does seem it does seem like maybe you want to run a lower profile. I What I don't understand, because he's clearly got it. I don't know. He's probably on Trump's side here and thinks that Trump is, but if he's going to let Flynn go because he knows about Pizzagate, then he's complicit in Pizzagate. Right. Because that makes no sense. Why wouldn't he just blow Pizzagate out of the water and investigate it and come up with actual evidence instead sure. of a bunch of, you know, random yeah. email. Like, random it garbage. doesn't make, it doesn't, it literally it makes, makes no, no sense, sense at all. And much of the world. And I don't know whether general Flynn comprehends that they are devil worshiping luciferian <laughs> demon possessed maniacs. Yes. yes yes but he does know they're child molesters <laughs> i don't know if you know about all these other adjectives that i just made up none of which are real and most of which are magic uh, really that's awesome that's I, I think that's great. He just keeps laying it on too. It's well, and it's, it's like he's getting all paid the same by thing. the work. Right? He's already he's got the Dickens version. <laughs> right, exactly, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, it was the best of times. That's not gonna, the, the it's Dickens. The, worst of the time, Dickens yeah. is for the child molestation. <laughs> that's <laughs> the Dickens. <laughs> I gave him the Dickens. <laughs> Please, sir, can I have some? I <laughs> saw. <laughs> really. Really, sorry, Cecil. Man, I'm sorry. Really. I'm sorry. All right, Milo. I'm glad. <laughs> I wouldn't give this good a head if it wasn't for Father Michael. <laughs> if it wasn't for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton uh, taught me to eat pussy uh, when I was eight. <laughs> he does know that they're criminals, that they're involved in child trafficking, child molestation, child rape. Child, what, look at, it's, it's all, all the, the same, same thing. thing. <laughs> Jesus, man. How many, how many different ways God. is he going to say kitty fucking? <laughs> Like, everybody just says kitty fucking at some point. Jesus, get off the source.com. <laughs> Child murder. He knows it. He knows it. You can't be in that position of power and not have information about these people. And it's coming to light. And WikiLeaks exposed just a tip of this. Just a tip? <laughs> <laughs> I was going there. Oh. <laughs> well, Phrasing. <laughs> Well, those kids are little. You got to start it's with just a true. tip. It's very true. You know, you don't, yeah. don't want to wreck them right away. You don't. <laughs> God. The this worst. Is, why the, are we the even. Very, the very worst part is that is that when we get our $200,000 book deal right? from Simon Schuster. Someone's going to find Someone's going to edit this together and be like, see. Yeah. This is the part they're going to find. Right. <laughs> this I'm is just like, one. my whole face just falls. Like, yeah, of all too, the is, shit we've said. The other thing, too, is no one would ever listen to the back. Right? <laughs> like, this ain't worth it. No, they, actually, I don't care that they get $200,000. But, $200, but here's the thing they don't have to listen to the back catalog. They can listen to literally the last, <laughs> the, the last episode. <laughs> the last episode. I, I yell out, enjoy gestating your rape, baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I feel like. We don't have to work real hard to make sure we don't get anything exactly. nice in this yeah, world, no, right? Yeah. We have we have definitely yeah. written our own check. And this that is check it. is equals to zero. Yeah, is look, a, look paid to cash, zero. Zero dollars? <laughs> this 
dark, evil system. And General Flynn's aware of it, and others are aware of it, and it's coming out. And if it ever comes out in a fullness that the average person on the street sees it, hears it, understands it, there will be mass vomiting in the society. Who's going to hold our hair? That's really the question. Who's going to hold our hair? And Lark just sat back and enjoyed what he created. A complete and total barforama. <laughs> Stand by me, I, joke, Seriously, man. seriously, yeah. You know, when people hear about this, it's going to be a complete and total barforama once people hear about but it. Yeah. Well, fucking, you know, as, as far as like, most of the dumb internet is concerned. They think it's a real thing anyway. When people find out what these demon-possessed rulers have been doing for decades with children, the children who disappear, who are kidnapped and disappear, the children that are easily kidnapped out of third world nations. Yes. Nobody even knows. Yes. That's I mean, you get them in the jungles and, the Amazon and Africa, they just disappear. Nobody yeah. You can knows. get them Amazon? Yeah, huh, absolutely. Is it two-day shipping? Yeah, it's, it's prime now, actually. Yeah. I, look, like, when you want to rape a kid, you're not going to wait two days. No wonder the box has a smiley face on it when it arrives. <laughs> if you turn it upside down, though, it's a frown. You just... <laughs> You just cut a hole in those kids anyway. Just cut a hole in the yeah. box and fuck the oh, box. Jesus, yeah. Jeez. <sighs> You know, it's it's funny because you just like, yeah, you know, all those kids that nobody can account for or that anybody knows about, all those kids are raped and stolen and murdered. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, that's fucking easy. And where do they put them all? Yeah. Like, where are all these, like, okay, so, so they get them from the Amazon? Like, where sure. that's... Like, what, like yeah. were they picking them like fruit? Do they, they have like a little cut sticker? Like a, they like clear a, cut them. <laughs> yeah, that's how they do it. They, <laughs> this is why it's, it's deforestation of the Amazonian children. <laughs> what? Well, they're easy to find. They got those little heads. <laughs> <laughs> These children are being brought into a, a demonic system to be raped, molested, and then murdered. That's how we've. That's how we actually fuel our clean coal plants. Yeah. Well, what? what I, well, how do you the, think where, these things run? Where are all these bodies? It's like where? Are just like wouldn't we just run into them at some point? Crush them down into plutonium. <laughs> and we fire them in the nuclear. Like I don't know. Like, what are we fracking with them? Exactly. Like, we're just, <laughs> just shoot them into a exactly. fucking squish well full yes. of dead babies oh, or something. There you go. What is happening? That's outside all these of Planned Parenthood. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> you just sell them to Planned Parenthood <laughs> on consignment. Well, that's what you do, right? As right? soon as you fuck them dead and then murder them, or fuck them, fuck dead, them dead, I guess. Uh, you could. You can do it in either order. Yeah, I wouldn't throw I it guess. out after that. I think <laughs> just gotta, we'll keep they'll still keep while. for a while we'll if you refrigerate them. Yeah, yeah. It's just a little cold. How long is it? What's the leftovers period? Like best if used by date on these Amazonian kids. You could accept the fact that this city is headed for a disaster of biblical proportion. What do you mean biblical? What he means is Old Testament, Mr. Yes. Mayor. Real wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Fire and brimstone coming down from the skies. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. All right, so this is also Rick Wiles. If Hillary Clinton won, we would all be dead from nuclear war. I do want to say, too, I don't want to listen to this whole thing. It's like three minutes long. I only want to listen to the beginning because okay. that's when he talks yeah. about Hillary. So, okay. God intervened in the affairs of this nation. It took like half a day. I was filling out ballots. My hand got cramped up. <laughs> I'm down in Alabama and North Carolina. I was like filling them out, right. punching Chad's Chads. Chad after day. Chad. D D I, I love this, this chain of thought because um, it just continues to suggest that nobody can believe that he won. Even after he won. Right. They're just like, look, we still don't understand how this happened. Yep. It's not the will of the people. And God intervened, and God is Russia. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and prevented us from certain destruction. We were going to war. That Without a promise. doubt. With who? With who? We were going to war, Tom. 
Look, well, you don't have to. But those she didn't get elected, a, so you don't have to fucking quantify anything. Doesn't right? there have to be an because opposing it's side? It's made up, right? It's fucking made up, man. It's all fucking like it's all like Gotham by Gaslight, right? Fucking like some <laughs> some some series that doesn't it doesn't fit into a regular universe. Right. You get to make whatever you want up. Join the army. See the opposing yeah. army. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even believe we would be here today, Doc. I believe we would be evaporated by today. We all, all of us would be in glory by now. <laughs> hey well, now. What, isn't that what you want? Yeah. Like, well, wouldn't you be happier to be in glory? I love the idea. It was like, like well, Trump turns know. out his first hundred days and it's like, we're going to do all this stuff. She turns out her first hundred days. And after day 30, it's like, no, sorry, everybody's dead. Right. I've, I've only got to day 30 and day 30, I nuke everybody. They're all going to get to glory. They're all going to star in a black movie about the civil war, like all of them, all of them. They're the worst extras in that movie. And let me, let's be honest. She's a woman. She wouldn't have got us into a war. She probably would have just got us lost. And then she would have had to ask for rations. She would have, she might've done something like came out to like the, you know, one of the joint sessions of Congress and then like decided, no, I'm not going to go. Cause I have absolutely nothing to wear. <laughs> I can't go. She's wearing the same pantsuit. <laughs> you Elizabeth Warren have right? to call each That's other What beforehand. are you wearing? Yeah. There's no way I would have let it happen. She fixes illegal immigration by just incessantly nagging about it. <laughs> she calls up Putin just to tell him about her dreams last night. <laughs> Hey, let's let's talk about our feelings. Oh, How about we don't talk about our feelings? It's just like shooting <laughs> missiles at us. Just like, we don't need to talk about this relationship she, anymore. She fires her press secretary because he answers the wrong question, the answer the wrong way to like, do I look fat in this? Right? <laughs> just, you're fired. Get out of here. She's negotiating yeah. with someone. They just close their eyes. What color are my eyes? <laughs> Hazel. Is it Hazel? No. Fuck. That's like all the colors. That's actually a good one. That's a good one to go with Hazel. Go with Hazel. Yeah. Every Always time. go with Hazel. Hazel. When in doubt, it's Hazel. And she's like, no, they're brown. Be like, yeah, they look Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> they change color with your mood, you moody bitch. I always say periwinkle. <laughs> periwinkle? <laughs> I don't know what color that is. So it's perfect. It's like periwinkle. Yeah. It sounds good. What color am I? I don't fucking white around the outside. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Unless you're from Dune, then they're blue around the outside. <laughs> Abortions for all. <laughs> Very well. No abortions for anyone. <laughs> hmm. Abortions for some. Miniature American flags for others. Yay! This story comes from Christianity Today's society section. Hmm. Franklin Graham says supporting Planned Parenthood like raising money to fund a Nazi death camp. Yeah. Exactly. It's exactly the same thing. They have a new boxcar service that goes directly oh, there. Jesus. So you could just get Ooh. on at home. <laughs> so he, he made these comments in response to the efforts of Barbara Bush, daughter of former President George W. Bush, to raise support for the organization. He said, quote, Planned Parenthood is the number one abortion provider in the United States. Raising funds for this organization is like raising money to fund a Nazi death camp, like Auschwitz, except for innocent babies in their mother's wombs. You know, and the hard part is getting a Zyklon B up there. That's you actually, know? that's Zyklon Plan B. Oh, they get nicely it to him the next done. Day. Nice so Zyklon that's how, Plan B. That's how you get it. Yeah. That's got like a string on it so you can pull it out when it's done. <laughs> got to take it in the shower. So. <laughs> How do you crowdfund a death camp, by the way? Well, it's it's a it's a bit of a rough Kickstarter. Yeah. But it's like yeah. a goose step starter. <laughs> it's not actually a Kickstarter. You know, what what you do is you take the gold teeth from the people you kill in the first batch. There you go. But you have to have a first batch. That's, That's the thing, man. That's the startup true. costs are ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It does self-sustain after a while. Yeah. Right. But the startup costs are just absurd. That's why Planned Parenthood has to sell the baby bits, right? Oh, I see what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, I right. see how they I see how they go about so it. So it's you know they yeah. the, the the first one's free. Yeah, and then you know it's how they <laughs> first one's free. <laughs> people sit outside. They like get you tapping needles. They get you hooked on abortions, right? They just but they, I mean this that is kind of what these idiots think, right? right. They the, right. they get you fucking hooked on abortions as some kind of measure of birth control, which pretty much is not generally used as a right. measure of recurrent, exactly. birth, yeah. recurrent yeah. birth control. So, but it's just this is. The idea that like killing a clump of cells the size of a fucking grape sure. 
is equivalent to killing a fully actualized human being is so fucking ridiculous and insulting. I, I resent the reason why I resent this kind of rhetoric is that it shuts down the conversation for what actually could be an interesting conversation about when life begins, right? Because I don't, I mean, I know that there's a lot of other people out there that feel the same way, that that life does not begin at conception, but also life doesn't begin when the baby's head crowns from the the right. birth canal, right? right. There's a, there's a, there's, there's something there's, happens there's something in the interim, in right? between yeah. there right. where life begins, but we can't ever have this conversation because they think that, you know, abortion is like Auschwitz yeah. and you're like, okay, well look, if we could just get to the meat of this problem, right. Of whether or not life begins after, you know, a hundred cells come together, you know, yeah, whatever right. it is, you know, like what, yeah. at what point can we start talking about what you think life is and what I think life is well, and then have a conversation yeah, yeah, that, about That's it. your whole point. We can't because it's a fucking hyperbole factory. Right. Like all we're generating is outrage. Like that's the widget. Like the widget is fucking outrage. And that's all they want to generate. It's they, they fucking feed this garbage into the hyperbole factory. And then the outrage fucking shits out the other side. And that's all that we have. That's that's it. And there, there is no conversation. And it's a conversation we should be having. Right. And I think it's a conversation that evolves constantly, frankly, as technology changes and if, I as think interventional that, measures change. I think right? that number goes down. As, uh, as and every I'm pro-choice. I'm like, they're with you. I'm pro-choice. But as every year by year, the more viable that the thing that the, that the fetus becomes outside of the womb, the more I push back on the, you know, the 20 weeks or whatever it is. I mean, there's babies 22 weeks that are viable outside of the womb. Now, not every baby's viable outside of the womb 22 weeks. And that still, of course, brings into the question, you know, the health of the mother, whether or not it's yeah, rape it's, or incest. There's all these such a complicated other issue. There's a lot of other complicated right. things that go into it. But, you know, I'm willing to have different conversations about this. If you're willing to come to the table and say, let's have a conversation about whether or not. But what if all I'm willing to do is come to the table and say, it's the same thing as a Nazi death camp. Then I'm allowed to gouge your face off with a coat hanger. I'm like going I'm going to do to the baby. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> So, Tom, let's talk for a moment about our sponsor, AdamandEve.com. We have a flyer here that we're looking at where this woman is in a sex swing looking terribly seductive. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day it and is, nothing says it, Valentine's like flowers, chocolates, and tying a woman against a door and begging the ever-loving <laughs> shit out of her. <laughs> and you can get that free you sex can. swing by going to AdamandEve.com you can, you can. and entering Gloria Checkout. You can. And you get three more... Uh, three. Three more free kinky gifts. It says it's over a hundred and twenty dollar value, uh, and you'll get free shipping still, and uh, and so you can get a free sex swing if you're into that. Uh, right now, if you go to adamandeve.com and you use uh, the code Glory at checkout, uh, adamandeve.com has a huge selection, and one of the best parts is is you don't have to have an awkward conversation about your sex swing with a with a guy behind a counter. counter at some weird sex shop. You can just you can just get it delivered to your door discreetly and know that you can just have that sex swing at your disposal without having the weird conversation. Get it delivered to your door, attach it to your door, and bang against your door. <laughs> <laughs> you keep on knocking. I'm gonna let you in. <laughs> this is uh, Alex Jones. There's a there's a ton of these. There's yeah. a ton of these. Yeah. The witches are coming. Yeah. We could play them all sort of in a row. And yeah, talk let's, about let's each do one that. Yeah. So this is Alex Jones. Witches are coming after Donald Trump because he's good. My favorite part of this is what is how he describes Donald Trump. I'll let it good. play out. I'll let it play out. It's very funny. He's, he understands more and more now that no, the NSA is being used to spy on you, sir. So now he's even he, 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 he's, he's got a few areas. because He's not been very computer technical. He's not been very computer technical. But I thought he had the best cyber. He's not. <laughs> Did he have the most cyber or the, the best cyber? I don't remember. He had the bigliest cyber. I don't remember he if it the, was the most or the best. You just China side, China <laughs> cyber is, I don't remember. It's not very computer tech. It's not very savvy. He has like idiot savant, regular people skills. <laughs> what does the idiot savant, regular people skills? That's my favorite descriptor of Donald Trump ever. Idiot savant, regular people skills. You are the averagest average guy. <laughs> but that's like, oh, he's, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So his regular people skills are at such a high level. He's so regular. Like he's so regular. Like he Super fucking regular. shits at exactly 10.01 every morning. 
a not fucking 1002. He's that regular. He's fucking Look, prune juice and like, weedy. He's almost 70. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. better be, yeah. right? If he backs up, he'll fucking yeah. explode. Fucking any day without a number two is like diverticulitis <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> and knows how to read people and knows how to have incredible mega level charisma in person. Yeah. He absolutely. knows how to have. He does have mega level charisma. He rolls. 3D12. Do you, but it, it, he doesn't even say that he has it. He knows how to yes, have gamer it. Gamer joke guy. <laughs> Get in your basement. <laughs> We're going to live here forever. It's 3D12 plus four. Mom and dad says we have to live in the basement. It's, <laughs> it's all tile down here. <laughs> they hose it down once a week. It's like a habit trail for people. <laughs> he does have mega level charisma. Though. No, he, but he says he knows how to have it. <laughs> He doesn't even say that he has it. Right, that's true. He, but he's like, hey, do you have mega level no, charisma? No, but I no, know. Yeah. but I know where to get it. Yeah, like, I'm like a billionaire. I can buy that shit. What the fuck? Yeah. I'm not really a billionaire. No, you're not. And I just want people to realize that that's why every evil force out there hates Trump, because he's good. He is good. He's not one of these fake Christian Pharisees that tells you how good they are all day or tells you you shouldn't have, you know, stubbed your toe and said the, you know, GD or whatever. <laughs> GD. The GD. The GD, Tom. Hey, did you say the GD? I said the gangster disciple. <laughs> did you say the GD? God judges the heart, okay? I admit I do a lot of bad things and I repent for it. I, I'm weak. I killed a little girl last night. <laughs> I, I <laughs> raped her and I killed her. I just strangled her until she stopped. She breathing for a little while and I just strangled her. Killed her. I just killed her. <laughs> Knew I was going to do it ahead of time. Did it anyway. Don't care. Don't care. Yeah, but I, don't repent, I repent for it. I, I, I repent for it. I said I was sorry <laughs> in the air. That's what I did. In the air. Because I'm good. In the flesh. I constantly do stuff that's bad. But I'm trying not to is the difference. <laughs> constantly. I'm, just, I'm actually doing you, bad things right now. There's a tiny boy <laughs> under this desk provided to me by Andy Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> constantly doing good. I'm all. It never stops. It never stops. I'm just, I, when I'm not here, I'm using my money to hurt other people. <laughs> it works for me. And I love God and I want justice. I'm not a coward. And God hates cowards and people that hurt innocents and that abuse those that are weaker than them more than anybody if you read the scriptures. So all you fakes want to get close to God, stop being cowards. Be like Donald Trump. <laughs> oh my God. Get like three marriages. Like you guys. Paint yourself orange. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get real old. Have a colostomy bag. Guy's fucking awful. He's got to fill fucking... your pants every once in a while. <laughs> Say huge. <laughs> Mispronounce shit. Have tiny hands. Make fun of the disabled. <laughs> like, lots of things. Be like Matt Drudge. Be like people that get attacked and demonized and make it through it and get stronger on the other side. Don't be like all these little commentators and scumbags that hedge their bets when we are literally approaching the Guter Damarong if things go south. And that's the battle of the gods. That's the twilight of the age. Which team are you, Jacob? Uh, which one's the sparkly vampire? Edward, that's Edward. Yeah, I'm the other one. Yeah. Whatever, whatever one is, is the hairy guy. Dude, that guy gets fucking more pussy. Are you kidding me? Which Edward or which pick one? They the, both the get pussy. Jacob guy. No, that little Twinkie guy. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> they're both fucking, they're both laid more than carpeting by empire. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> the fuck, man. That little sparkly guy. That little sparkly. Sparkly that little sparkly dude? guy is getting pussy with thrown the, at him like a fucking with frisbee. With rosy fucking cheeks? Are you kidding me? Really? Jesus Christ, No, dude. man. That's that's not happening. R no. First of all, all right, here's the question. Okay. Here's the question. Hold on, hold on. It's an important question. Is it Danish or don't? This is a, a donut or Danish question. All right. Vampire or werewolf? What do you mean? I mean, which one would you pick? Which oh, would you be? Yeah. Uh, so it's a donut or Danish sort of a situation here. So I think I go... But no, we're not talking sparkle. No, no, fucking no, 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 rainbow. No, no. Well, what's the mythology though? Like, what's which mythology are we going under here? Just like normal everyday mythology. Normal everyday. Like, then you, we're pick, not... then you pick vampire because vampire lives for a long time. Do the, do the werewolves not live for a long time? Is a werewolf not live? I, a long I don't time? know. I don't think so. How I, long does a werewolf live? I don't know how long a werewolf lives. Do, do you get? Does you have to take like a human lifespan and cut it by seven? <laughs> How much woof would it woof? <laughs> like every time you turn yeah, it seven exactly days, you're, right. like, you're like, fuck. Yeah. I just, I reduced. He's, go, he's going to the, he's going to the vet for prostate cancer at like right? 12. <laughs> I, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You got Harry Potter like there, Jimmy. You're walking around. You're like fucking on? smell weirdly like corn chips all the time. You're just like, fuck. Got that weird Your old dog follows smell. you around with a poop bag. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. actually, you know, I, I was thinking about this. I, I, I'd, go, I'd go werewolf, too. I, I, or, no, I didn't uh, say Vampire, werewolf. rather. Yeah, I'd I go vampire. vampire. Yeah, because yeah, I don't want to wear the, le- the the collar. Like, that's for that's for the other person. That is, you know? yeah, yeah. That's not, I'm going to, I'll hold the leash, well, but the I'm not is, on the you leash. Know, you know, fucking, come on. I mean, fucking vampires are all about the submission for other people, right? They're in the dominating other people. Right, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I'm not going to what's that? What's the worst thing that happens? You do a little spirit cooking once in a while. <laughs> shrink a little blood. No big deal. But, you know, the, the, the advantage to werewolf is belly rubs. So <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not saying you can't be a vampire and get a belly rub. Though. <laughs> it's just, yeah, but it's a little more awkward to ask. <laughs> I'd look, still ask. You will look into my eyes. <laughs> you you fucking will give me the, the belly, belly rubs. rubs. <laughs> The vampire's laying there and his leg is going back fast and back and forth. <laughs> Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a critical juncture, the most critical juncture our species has ever seen. And that witch raises her head on the day that, that she publicly supports witchcraft and Satanism and black magic. They were in the news saying, hope Trump dies, voodoo dolls. <laughs> That's what they said. They said, they said help uh, Trump die. voodoo dolls. They said, help Trump die, <laughs> bah, voodoo dolls. <laughs> What? Nah. Really? Nah. Who knows? <laughs> Couldn't we have gotten a more articulate spokes witch? Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Where's that? Where the fucking warlock with some sense when you oh, need them? God, what I love so much about that is that you have to believe witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> So awesome! I know, it's, it's so like, awesome that they're that they're like I that their fucking balls shot up right into their body when they heard Trump was going to get a curse on him, and they're like, "Oh my oh god, my what god. are we going to do? Right? What are we going to do? Call the fucking Justice League!" Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who fucking cares? It's not right? a thing. They're so scared. They're, they're fucking, fucking internal. Right? Give me a break! Fucking nothing. What we're going to do is nothing because it's a nothing. Yeah. It's like hoping at the sky you're going to get rain. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> The fuck? Well, actually, it does, but only after six thousand years of no rain. Yeah. <laughs> Everything has a light mist. Right? On it. It just, oh, it's just coated. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm licking the dew off of this fucking remote control because <laughs> there's no rain. I'm so thirsty all the time. <laughs> I don't know how my body is mostly made of water at all. <sighs> you know, I, I I would love to have a voodoo doll of myself. I think that would be. Oh god, uh, yeah. I don't know if there's that much material, yeah. but I would love to have a voodoo doll of myself. I just think like if you have to put like, because I would jerk it off. Like, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> you're like coming in your pants. Yeah, oh, that's so weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, ma, no hands. <laughs> no, no, look, ma. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you need a voodoo doll for that. <laughs> Have you seen what happened to Haiti? What happened in New Orleans? Voodoo and devil worship. Isn't it funny they have devil worship in Africa, even before they ever heard from Christians? And China had devil worship, and the Aztecs had devil worship, because it's real, folks. I'm just so spectacularly baffled that he really thinks that they had devil worship, that they would have a concept of the devil, which only exists as a biblical concept. I think think what he's saying, though, is like... Is they had evil deities. Yeah. Right. right. But he's forgetting that they also had benevolent deities. Sure. Right. He's skipping the benevolent deities because we replace those. But he's allowing them to keep their evil deities. Because it because, better fits his narrative of it's it's B Y O D. <laughs> Bring your own <laughs> demon. <laughs> Can demonic spirits attach themselves to, to inanimate objects? The answer is yes. But I don't think every sweater you get from Goodwill has demons in it. <laughs> but, but in a sense, uh, your mother's just being super cautious. So, hey, uh, it, it, it didn't go hurt you anything to, to rebuke any spirits that happen to have attached themselves to those uh, clothes. Uh, Pat Robertson, also super worried about witches. Mm. Big shock here. Because again, go. Pat Robertson thinks you can't buy sweaters at Goodwill <laughs> without <laughs> cleansing them of their evil, evil spirits. spirits. Here's Pat. All right. This viewer says, my father is in a satanic cult. My son and I recently became Christians 
after seeing the power that this cult had. The cult has put curses on my son and and I and the spirits have attempted to attack us. Can the spirits hurt us? This is a grandpa who's in a satanic cult. Yeah, it's grandpa's this cult. This is grandpa in a satanic cult. Well, why are you saying that? Having, a, are you ageist about having, this? I am. Why are you I'm so fucking ageist about Satanism? That grandpa, like grandpa can be a racist, but not a Satanist. <laughs> like I draw the line. At, I draw Satanist. the line. Where's Satanist. that Venn diagram? Like how does that, how do those circles, like circles. overlap? Like how, how do you be a racist Satanist? Can I you be a racist possible. Satanist grandpa? Yeah. Like, I don't know. If we are both Christians. Oh, the Bible says a curse causeless cannot lie. What? I, what? <laughs> what? 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 The Bible what? says. What? What? The Bible says. <laughs> and some that me can't rest on you. Some some uh, demon power. They try to curse you, but in the name of Jesus, you 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 take it back. And I may add, I, I read that a bunch of witches has got together to put a curse on Trump, and I. I think the Christians need to be praying for him to defend him. Oh, my God. We'll have a wish fight. Do, they, do, <laughs> do you need to have the same amount of wishers on each side? Like, what if they have one more wisher than you have a wisher? Dude, this is uh, seriously. Like, what What if, Tom? Yeah, uh, oh, we have, <laughs> they have 99 sky wishers and we only have a 98 sky wishers. This is a Voldemort versus Dumbledore magic fight. With, with even less special effects. That's right. <laughs> Right? <laughs> the stakes could not be lower. Like, they just couldn't Voldemort be. doesn't fight Dumbledore. He gets killed. No, they have a... Spoiler. They, oh, they do have a big fight. Do they have a fight? Yeah, they have a great big fucking Dumbled wizard battle. But Dumbledore, doesn't he... It's like in the fourth movie. Oh, fifth movie. I forgot it's not about it. I thought yeah. it was... I thought no, he, not at the very end. He gets killed by Trent Reznor, and then... <laughs> he does get killed by Trent Reznor. Everybody lives happily ever after. <laughs> That's how I remember it. That's how it I remember it. It comes down to this. I literally, I literally did not watch any other movies after he died from Trent Reznor. I was like, that's it. That's the end of the story. Everybody loses. I love Cecil's that Cecil's watching is like, well, Bumblebee's dead. Yeah, I, I love go. it. I love it so much. I was like, oh, he's dead? Awesome. <laughs> Click. And then I shut it off. I was like, that's the best because oh. there was no other stories after that. And I have not revisited the series. I don't care how it ends. I'm like, that's how it ends. It ends with Dumbledore dying. In my, Dumbledore in my, dies, mind, in like, my mind, Trent Reznor kills Dumbledore. <laughs> and then he goes on tour and kicks over his... His, his stand, yeah. and it doesn't stop playing. Yeah, like, just, like, you remember yeah, that I shit? Do, I remember. He would trash he would, the fuck he would, out. He'd, he'd, be, he'd chuck the fucking keys <laughs> off a piano like, like as a fucking corn stalk. He'd take the mic stand and be like... And it wouldn't make a peep. It wouldn't make a sound. It'd be like... And you're like, and the music is still playing for blast. You're like, you literally have no functional instruments on stage they're at just, all. They're just <laughs> smashing instruments. Just, he basically brings pinata instruments. He and brings with fucking happens. heroin comes and out. It's like, like, he doesn't jump too hard because the CD will skip, you know? Oh, it was so bad back then. God. It was so funny. Oh, it's terrible. He smashes it. It's just fucking needles There's no, coming out. There's nothing. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> I totally spoiled Harry Potter for people. Oh no! Yeah, about ten sorry, years after. Sorry, fact. I, sorry, I spoiled a movie that's like ten years old yeah. or whatever. Super <laughs> sorry. Rosebud is this sled. That's all I'm saying. At the same time, send those curses back where they came from. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> no, you sent the curse back where you came from. I'm rubber, you're glue. <laughs> Any curses you shoot at me, bounce off me, stick to you. Nana, nana, boo, boo. Curses, Cecil. Curses, foiled again. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about curses. So you, you just resist it in the name of Jesus. I will not receive it. I will not receive it. And I command you, Satan, loose me. And I here's what you say. I thought you just said. Uh, Eric, no, 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 no. This is he's important. He's got his fingers out this to count. Important. He's got he's, his his bony digits already. He's, he's for a, accountant. He's his, an accountant. His arthritisizers are out. So here we go. <laughs> he, I thought he just said what to say though. He could die before this is over. <laughs> this is right. this is taped. This is, yeah. this is taped. This is his and last he could die. He can, like, this is the only guy this that's so that. old. Yeah. He could die live. <laughs> In a recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, this is important, though. This is what, you, guys. This is if you if you take anything away from this episode, what you need to take away is this is how you get rid of fake demons. Okay? <laughs> I so I already knew. Here we go. Use these words. I bind you, Satan, and 
the forces of evil. I bind you and the forces of evil. He counted that different <laughs> each time. He counted it different. At, at it first, was, it was first it was five, five that it was three. three. Yeah. And it's more words three, than so that anyway. Three. <laughs> That's because two of his fingers uh, stroked out in the middle of that sentence. Shall be three. No, but it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feeling in two of them. So he's skipping over those. Uh, and watch what happens. In Jesus' name, I made it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I might no, that kind of, that's important. Yeah, in like, Jesus I find you. Yeah, in whose name? <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Uh, oh, fuck. God, he knew. Are you listening to Pat Robertson again? Ah, uh, shit. Back to Quiznos. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and you know, there doesn't mean that there aren't groups of people in this country that, uh, you know, that I have sympathy for. I do. And there are kids that were brought into this country by their parents unknowing that they were breaking the law. And they will say to me and others who defend the rule of law, we have to do something about the 11 million. And some of them are valedictorians. Well, my answer to that is, and then, by the way, their parents brought them in. It wasn't their fault. It's true in some cases, but they aren't all valedictorians. They weren't all brought in by their parents. Uh, for everyone who's a valedictorian, there's another hundred out there that um, they weigh 130 pounds and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. Cecil, this is good news. Yeah. I like this story. Yeah. I try so hard not to like things. And I even included this. And I'll be perfectly blunt. I see stories that I like and I don't include them. Because they're too happy and they don't fit the theme of this show. <laughs> this one this is from BuzzFeed. Is great. Yeah. yeah, this is wonderful. And this is right. Uh, churches are readying homes and underground railroads to hide immigrants from deportation under Trump. Think about the fact that for a second, I, I, was, I was reading this and I was happy. But we have to be in a position yeah. where we're doing this. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That, I, I feel a little fucked up about that. So um, th th this, this is actually reminiscent um, of some of the uh, uh, better angels of, the, of, of our nature from the abolitionist movement, you know, where churches and church leaders, and, and many of them did, um, really help to establish and build and maintain underground railroad systems that, you know, help to move uh, slaves from the South to the North um, and championed the cause of abolition. Um, and now we're kind of seeing a resurgence of that concept and churches are in part leading the way. Um, and I think that that's great, but also fucking horrifying that we have to have this. I would also say, too, you know, one <clears> of the <throat> things that the churches can do is not vote for this guy. Yeah, right. right? You know what I mean? Because overwhelmingly right. the Christian vote goes for this guy. You know, don't vote for this guy and then have to fucking, you know, fight, against fight his them. policies. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? This is one of those things, though, that strikes me. And I don't have a ton to say about this, but, you know. One of the things that strikes me about this is this this is sort of the same thing that has that we were talking about with healthcare earlier that, you know, this is incredibly complex. Yeah. Immigration is a incredibly complex issue in this country. And it's not, you know, it's not just there should be no immigrants. And it's, you know, I mean, I think that that's an yeah. asinine view. The right? answer is not all or nothing. Yeah. Right. There's a middle ground. Absolutely. Here. And, I, and I'm not open borders. I'm not a guy who's open borders, but I'm also not a guy who thinks we should be splitting up families for something one of that family did, right? right? So one of the family leaves and comes here and then they take their whole family and, you know, maybe the wife didn't have a choice. Maybe the kids didn't have a choice. Maybe the, you know, they brought the mother-in-law. Yeah. Maybe she they met a, a woman here and yeah. then they had kids then, here. There's, a, right? there's yeah. so many different or, or whatever things that can happen. You know, to get rid of, you know, the DACA kids, to get rid of the the yeah. Dream Act kids, uh, you know, whatever, you know, to get rid of those dreamers, what they call the dreamers, uh -huh. is, is a, it's, a disservice it's to this country. Yeah. It makes us a weaker country. It really does. You know, that's the thing, too, is like, even if we just want to be selfish dickwads about it, it makes us a weaker country. It, you, you're going to take those Dream Act kids and you're going to kick them the fuck yeah. out of here. You're, you're taking... Yeah. You're, you're saying, like, I don't care if you're, you know, the, the best and the brightest, the motivated, the... I don't give a fuck. Fucking, I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need it. doesn't matter. Just get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, you're taking... You're you're denying people that, that want to do the work. And you're saying, nah, you don't count because you weren't just fucking didn't have the luck of the draw to be born here. And all the kids here are innocents, right? Just like we, right. would, we would consider them innocents if they were... 
victims of child molestation. You would con- you would consider him the exact same thing. You'd be like, that's an innocent kid. He didn't have anything to do. He with, didn't make a choice. He didn't make yeah. a choice on whether right. or not to have sex with someone. They made the choice for him. The same thing here. They didn't make the choice to come here. They didn't make the choice to be born here. They didn't make, you know, and then to be like, well, now let's split apart this family. Let's split this family up because one of you is here legally because right. you were born here, but then the other ones aren't. This is an asinine way to go about it. And I recognize, I understand the idea, like like the concept of anchor babies or whatever. I get that concept. I understand it, right? But at the same time, uh, I also have sympathy for human beings. Like I have sympathy for human beings and their struggle and, and how they, you know, how they got here and why they're here. You know, there's ways to work around this. Now, do I think that you should just like fling the doors open and anybody's available? Yeah. And I don't think, I don't know if that's a good idea either, but a wall certainly isn't going to change anything. You know, well, it'll a change wall, things. Yeah, a, it'll a, be wall is, a wall is symbolic. That's yeah. all it is. It's just a symbol. It's like putting a big fucking, you're not welcome here. Sign. It, down it's a there. noose in a tree. Yeah. It's a noose in a tree. Yeah. It's, a, it's all it is. It's a, it's a symbol of our ongoing. I mean, look, we, we, I mean, walls, we, we've, 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 we talked about this before. Like, Every time there's a wall built yeah. between one country and another country, it is universally reviled by history. We don't celebrate that. I mean, the Great Wall, like we fucking walk on it now, right? Like yeah. it's you, you go, you can fucking take a walk on the Great Wall. We we revile these things typically, you know, as symbols of 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 our hubris and xenophobia, and we're going to build another one, and we think that we're going to be judged differently. It's ridiculous. It's outrageous. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. This story comes in the New York Times, failing New York Times, mm. <clears throat> which is doing better than it's done in how long? Very long time. Long time. Very long yeah. time. Failing. 100 headstones toppled at a Jewish cemetery. Cemetery? Cemetery. Cemetery. It's a cemetery. Cemetery. Cemetery in Philadelphia. Uh, which is kind of weak sauce because they kicked over 170 at a Jewish cemetery in Missouri recently. So <laughs> way to be fucking second class, Philly, your fucking garbage cheesesteak, <laughs> <laughs> which don't fucking write me because I fucking drove three and a half hours out of my way to eat that fucking Philly cheesesteak sandwich at the original owls or fucking whatever it was. And it tastes like human garbage. But but hold on. Though. That was a shitty sandwich. Hold on, though. If people come to Chicago and they go to Al's Beef because that's sport of like number one beef or whatever, yeah, and it's, it's the most famous one. It's a terrible beef sandwich. You're right. It's you're, a terrible you're, beef you're sandwich. You're right. You're right. There's like so cinnamon if, in it, and it's I like know. it's fucking I don't terrible. Know why. It's a I terrible, don't know why. terrible beef sandwich. It's, you can get uh, a such a much. You can get a way better beef sandwich at Portillo's. You can get a way better beef sandwich at like Nikki's Euro. Yeah, Nikki's right? is good. Yeah. What? So is uh, so is uh, Mr. Beef on Orleans and way better. Yeah, Mr. Beef is fu- Al's is garbage. Yeah. Even just don't Buena go to beef. House. Even Buena beef is better than it. Buena beef is way better. Yeah, yeah. It's so t- maybe, maybe I just got exactly maybe the wrong. You, maybe you went to the first one. There was a huge line. I know that doesn't mean it, but I think that's there there's a all fucking huge line. Then. I don't know. It was like a fucking middle of the day in the middle of the week. Was it a shitty area? Well, it's Philadelphia. Yeah. Oh, okay. That it was in sense. Philadelphia. Oh, I thought okay. I mentioned that. Oh, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> so a hundred headstones toppled at a Jewish cemetery. Yeah. They, they initially Tom thought that this was vandals. Then it turned out to be Visigoths. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That this, they actually dorky history. They joke. actually found out Tom. They actually yeah. found out this is at a Jewish cemetery. So they actually found out that it was not, human beings this was a weather phenomenon called a zyclone <laughs> a zyclone b actually now i know why like, you wanted to cover this story how many you got over there that's two. great it's that's cyclone. terrific I, I love a zyclone oh yeah no I, if I could, this is awful they, they they dumped a bunch of fucking headstones but i but i want to talk about this other story that 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 is uh you know and this is one of those things too trump was talking about when he was quizzed about this Hey, what do you think about this? And when we covered it on the uh, on, yeah. on the ele- on the the press Live conference, stream, yeah. he was talking about, oh, well, it's you know sometimes they sometimes other people do it. Yeah, sometimes to they blame do it, it on ourselves. To, yeah, do you right. think somebody got? Because we talked about this earlier. This is not a one guy job. No, we this vandalized. isn't a two guy job. Yeah. I vandalized when I was a kid. I know I, most a lot of boys. I would imagine right. not going to ubiquitously say that all boys vandalize, but a lot of boys vandalize. You and I have shared some stories. We yeah. have fucked some shit. I up. vandalized some stuff when uh-huh. I was a kid. Absolutely, I, I have I too. I did I too. Fucked some shit. I was shit a little up. asshole. Yep. I was a total dick. Yep. And I did. I did some bad things. 
But to to push over this many headstones, it just take would take a long time. You would need you need a whole crew. You need at least eight or nine guys. I think you, I think to push over that many, one hundred and seventy. You're each push. I think. And to not get caught, yeah, because it's and you, you can't go in here and be like, "Oh, we're gonna spend the next hour and a half knocking over fucking headstones." This is a you got to be in and out in yeah, and ten if, or twelve even minutes. If, even if you're looking at, even if you're looking at, you know, you just being nine or ten of you, yeah, you know, that's you're into the you know tens a piece. That's what plus, I mean. Tw- so, almost twenty a piece. Yeah, so you got to hustle. Yeah, you almost twenty of these, and and you got to get it done in about five minutes, I would imagine, or somebody's going to notice because you're going to hear the sounds of these things falling right. over, and people plus, and then they're going to yeah. look out there, and there's a fucking crew of people knocking yeah. over fucking headstones. Yeah, I would imagine that it would take a lot of people. It, this is a whole truck so of hillbillies. I I have a hard time believing that a bunch of Jews got together <laughs> and were like, "Hey, what do you say? We go down there, we push a couple headstones over, blame it on Trump." <laughs> I don't think that happened. I don't think that that voice is accurate, though. That's, but in any way, <laughs> we the, should get Eli and see what he thinks. But it's what he'd high five me with his. Can we soft call a Jew? Hands. Can we phone a Jew? He'd, he'd soft hand high five me. Um, it would be all wet. Was, <laughs> fucking, it's always wet. Slappy. Always has this weird film on it. It's crazy. You know, he's, he's like one of those like sticky hand things that's yeah. no longer sticky. You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, that's called an amoeba. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Golden Eli. <laughs> I get one of those. You go uh, put the two quarters in to get a Bosnick when you uh, turn the thing or however that works. I don't know. <laughs> we get this other story, though, where it says Muslims raise over $91,000 for the vandalized Jewish cemetery in Missouri. So, I you know, that's there, great. there's a couple of different cemeteries got vandalized. This one in, in Missouri got a thousand, nine, almost $100,000 donated to help try to fix it. And I, I and I think that that's, that's wonderful, right? Like, this is how... It it sucks that these communities have to be marginalized together, yeah. right? In order to to kind of come together and be like, well, I guess we'll fucking put our differences aside, fucking right. enemy of my enemy, sure. right? And that's that's fucking unsettling. I think the best part about this is is this is ninety one thousand dollars that isn't going to Al Qaeda, and I think that that <laughs> is <a> benefit. <laughs> <laughs> the Jews donated to Al Qaeda. Like, ah, oh, thanks. You know what? We'll return the favor. Return the favor. We'll return. <laughs> so we want to thank all our patrons. Of course, we want to thank our newest patrons, Andres Nakia, Human Instrumentality Project. Yes. The entire fruited plane. <laughs> I love that they had to split it up from the. Right. But that's the first name is the, the, and then the last name is entire fruited plane. That's, that's awesome. John Mo biscuits, <laughs> Frank, Nevin, David, Lewis, Timothy, 87, Megan, Abson and cam. Thanks so, so much for your generous Thank donations. You. We really do appreciate it. Um, we also want to mention that on the 12th, of March, we will be doing another live stream. Indeed. And so if you were interested in watching it, you can catch it at 3 p.m. Uh, uh, Central Time. We'll be going live 3 p.m. So you can check it out on live stream. We'll put out links beforehand. So you can check our social media to find those links, or you can just go follow us on live stream and you might, I think you'll get a notification when we go live uh, to your email. Uh, or you, like I say, you could just follow us on the, on those different mediums. We will not be on YouTube, YouTube. It'll be on later, but you can again, watch it after the fact on YouTube, but you'll be able to interact with us, which is the big draw for these streams. You'll be able to interact with us on the 12th. Is it that big a draw? It's it's, really not really, but, (laughs) uh, but one of the things that I think we're going to try to do is because we don't really have much planned for this. If you want to send us stories that we can do for this particular episode, send the stories to us, but try to make sure they have video content yeah. because we're going to try to do things that are visual on the screen so people can see like them. Like a burlesque show. Yeah. No? Am I, did I misread you that? Did. You're going to wear your pants, right? Okay. I and am now. So, <laughs> it's on the board. <laughs> but uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try to utilize the screen so people will have something visual to look at as well. So send us stories. Based on that, uh, dissonance.podcast at gmail.com. If you think a good story with a good visual story, uh, let us know and send it to us. Mark your calendars. The 12th, which is a Sunday. It is. At 3 p.m. Central Time. 3 p.m. is kind of the sweet spot for all the different places. So like 3 p.m. our time is midday. 
th- 3 p.m. Our time is also like late night, late-ish night, nine, nine or nine o'clock or so in the UK. It's after Matlock. And then 3 p.m. Our time in Australia, at least one of the time zones in Australia, it's like eight in the morning. So it's early morning, Australia, but it's also Monday morning, right? So like, that's one thing, Sunday. Uh, Dude, it's the, like fucking Christmas or yeah. something over it's, there right now. Who happy knows? fizzle day or whatever. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. crazy. So uh, what's what's the weather like in Smarch? But, like, you know, like you could turn it on while you're shaving or whatever. I don't know, like I, whatever. In any case, we're going to be on the 12th uh, at 3 p.m. Central. Uh, so check us out then. So someone sent in this is amazing. an interview with us of Ishmael, and this is accurate. This is. So we are joined again by a friend of the show, Ishmael. Ish, how you doing, man? (laughs) (laughs) I love that it keeps going. I know. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, That's the problem is, is that he says the N word that many times. So uh, that was from Dan. Thanks for sending it. That's Dan. funny. We got a message from Scott and Scott said, he's just forwarding this along because uh, Patreon is one of the affected sites, but it looks like there was a, uh, uh, a leaking decrypted thing that happened with one of these major sites. Like it's Cloudflare or GitHub or something. And it says how many sites were affected? 4,200,000 possible domains. One of those happens to be Patreon. So it's so basically it's suggesting change your password. Right. Um, but it's 4 million sites. But I would never, like the thing is, you should probably just be changing your password every couple months anyway, and especially in different places. Patreon does not, as I recall, keep your payment information. No, they don't, right. But uh, but they could find, if you if you happen to use that password for other stuff, they could find it that way. So it might be time to change your Patreon password. Got a message. This was about when we talked about, I don't know if this was live stream or not. I can't remember, but we talked about uh, the striped. Yeah. The, 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 the striped, <laughs> the striped that sticks you look at horses, while you fuck right? and then that <laughs> turns something into a striped thing. You know, here's the thing I wondered about that after the fact is a lot of times when I'm fucking, I'm looking at a woman and I've never turned into a woman. <laughs> like, like wouldn't, wouldn't every time I'm you're, fucking. Yeah, but your kid's a little effeminate. So. Oh, I, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he can't throw a ball, right? Yeah. Throws it all weird like a guy with his left hand or something. (laughs) Oh, this is great, though. The comment is uh, regarding striped sticks. That's why Christians have sex in the dark. They're afraid their kids will resemble the wallpaper. That's awesome. So we we got an image from Norway. This is from Siegmund. And Siegman sent this in. This is this is a, a picture of Trump practicing uh, or demonstrating. He says demonstrating how to work a glory hole. So we're going to put this on this image this week's show notes. Um, so check it out. I, I think it's pretty accurate. Imagine just imagine Trump miming a glory hole. It's exa- I mean, he's like he's going in big love. It's just, on that. A, it's just a great way to uh, to uh, it's it's a great image uh, snap. You know, like one of those moments like where he's mid sentence. Uh-huh. You know. So this is from Jerry and Jerry said uh, he wanted to thank us because uh, their dad was not doing well. And uh, they used some of the jokes that we had said about the semen socks to their dad and their dad like doubled over in laughter and thought it was pretty great. Yeah, Yeah, The idea that you and your father could bond um, and have a heartfelt moment over a bit that we did. Uh, around coming in a sock and yeah. turning them into puppets. That's heartwarming. That got it's also had, sock warming. I had the but, big feels yeah. and the feels were crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> a little wet at first. Yeah, really yeah. crunchy when you find <laughs> them later. later. Right. When the maid finds them. <laughs> Hello. Oh, uh, we, we got a message. This, is, this fucking made me laugh out loud. This is from Mike. When your guest Marsh mentioned that he talked to a conspiracy theorist who want, who mentioned JFK getting killed because he knew we hadn't really landed on the moon, he would be half right. JFK didn't know we hadn't landed on the moon yet because he was killed in 63 and the moon landing was in 69. <laughs> and none of us got that when he said it. so funny. But was he saying like, was he saying like the whole, but I guess that this guy would think that that JFK was part of that planning conspiracy to like plan the conspiracy in 10 years or something. You know what I mean? We're like, going to do it in 10. So we have to kill this it. guy because in yeah, six, that's how okay. we do it. Yeah. I don't know. 
Jesus Christ. I, but I lo- I thought it was, so, was so funny. funny. We got a message from Megan and Megan sent in an image for I Trump. I love this image. It's it's uh Trump and uh Putin with a uh Calvin and Hobbes backpack, so we're going to put this on this it's week's so show notes. It's great. kind of adorable. We got a message uh this is from Chelsea and Chelsea wants some advice, Tom. Yeah, so the the advice here comes down to, you know, Chelsea feels I think like she is getting um browbeaten by the religious uh, instruction or, or, or teaching of her, her folks. And she is not religious and she wants to know specifically, should I engage in debate with her um, or just leave it alone? And he says, would it be too risky to even consider given the control that my parents already have over me? Uh, advice is appreciated. You know, I, the, your situation, I'm, I'm leaving out the first half. Your situation sounds a little more complicated, but you know, I, I, I do. I am of the opinion that you, you don't hide your thoughts. You don't hide your feelings. You know, you have every bit as much of a right to those thoughts and feelings that are non-religious as somebody who has religious thoughts and feelings has a right to theirs. Um, you know, just like you don't want to be treated in a dickish way by somebody who has religious thoughts and feelings. I would say don't treat other people in a dickish way with your non-religious thoughts and feelings. But there's also no reason to be shy or reticent or um, you know, feel like they're somehow a, a less than um, set of thoughts and feelings to discuss. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to fucking have that conversation, just have that conversation. Uh, I would caution against uh, doing that if, however, it would damage you in a way that could be, uh, you know, like like somebody taking away privileges from you or things like that. Like if yeah. you think that this is something that could really damage not just your relationship, because I don't know. I mean, it, you're going to be the judge on whether or not it's going to damage your relationship. Yeah, I have no way to we know. Have, I have no yeah. way to know that. But I'm talking about from reading your message. It sounds like your parents, your parents had a lot of control over you, and that could be, you know, damaging more than just a relationship. Sure. Yeah. And so consider your well being before you do something That's like good this. Point. You know, definitely do that with caution if you think it's going to cause you some sort, some sort of harm. Tom, we got a message from C, and C wants us to know about. Jim Baker's food buckets. So say, guys, you ever been to Jim Baker's actual website? It really is fantastic. There's a food bucket with complete recipes, which is supposed to feed one person for six months. Problem is, it's calculated on a daily intake of three servings, which average to 500 calories. Are you kidding me? Wait, the three servings? The three servings. So are, is it 1,500 a day? No, 500, because it says the website itself admits that you need 800 calories a day if you plan to survive without any physical labor at all. Needless to say, most of the servings consist of brown sugar, oatmeal, or white rice, or low-fat milk, but there are eight stroganoff in there. So there's eight stroganoff recipes, and you're going to fucking bite over them or something, Thunderdome for the stroganoff. And of course, the 25-year shelf life comes with uh, footnotes. He's also started selling lemon-lime detox and the silver gel that, quote, works faster, longer, and more efficiently than other silvers. I love that part. Silvers? Is he talking about old people? I, <laughs> they don't work very fast or long <laughs> or efficiently, actually. Yeah, it depends on their colon, maybe. Yeah, efficient, uh, though. perhaps. Mm. Perhaps. You just feed it in and it's like so. a fucking slip and slide. Oh, Come right out. So I, I think this is I think this is so funny. I, I've never really been to his website. I thought somebody wasn't somebody going to eat some of his food at some point. Yeah, I can't remember. Was it the scathing guys were going to eat his food? or something? I think they were. There's something. I don't know if they ever did or not, but I. I'm just curious. I, I, I'd heard somebody was going to try to eat his food. I That's the thing is like, as a patron goal, I don't know that I want to. First off, I'd be real reticent to pay that man money. But then also to try to fucking cook that garbage. Ugh. Like I might buy like a couple of fucking little packets from him or something. I would buy the packets. But right? I, would, I don't want a bucket. I would not buy a whole bucket of what food. What the fuck would you fuck do with a bucket? That. Fuck I wouldn't that. even shit in that bucket. Yeah. Not even after three days in the woods. If he sold them individually, I would consider making them on screen, like I would do recording that. it yeah. and then eating That'd it. I would consider doing yeah. that. But I would I would not want to make I would not want to pay a, enough money for a whole bucket. They're not cheap buckets. Yeah, they're not. And it's like fucking, but I would buy a a, a fuelless generator. <laughs> fuelless generator. Uh, what an asshole. What a piece of Anyway, so that's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, We are, like we said, going to come to you live uh, on the 12th. So mark your calendars if you want to join us for the live stream, 3 p.m. Central Time. But uh, as usual, we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. 
couched in scientician double bubble toil and trouble pseudo quasi alternative acupunctuating pressurized stereogram pyramidal free energy healing water downward spiral brain dead pan sales pitch late night info docutainment Leo Pisces, Cancer Cures, Detox, Reflex, Foot Massage, Death and Towers, Tarot Cars, Psychic Healing, Crystal Balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, Aliens, Churches, Mosques and Synagogues, Temples, Dragons, Giant Worms, Atlantis, Dolphins, Truthers, Birthers, Witches, Wizards, Vaccine Nuts, Shaman Healers, Evangelists, Conspiracy, Double Speak, Stigmata, Nonsense. Expose Your Signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this. The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information, and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.